Okay, so we are carrying on the other side of our Premium Majestic case and we have, in no particular order yet, the Pebble Lane Merlot from Monterey. We have the Marcello Pelleriti, or Marcello Pelleriti, where's Marcello? I've got to fight through the masses of bottles of the, the next wine. Well, we, so we have the next wine, which is the Pure Saint Paul from Corbier, which I have four of by mistake. And so yeah, this must be the, <laughs> by elimination, Bowman, this must be the next one. So we have a Malbec from Mendoza, Argentina, or Argentina. We have a Merlot from Monterey County. USA. Don't get much American wine and I don't get to go to America much for a long time. And we have a Corbier, so I reckon let's try them. Which are we going to try first? So this is a 14%. Shake them up a bit more, why don't you, Bowman? Yeah, so we're going to go in order that they are majestic and the first one is going to be very easy he says because it's a screw top there you go that's the, that's the sound that every person that likes wine loves to hear right the sound of a screw top opening i'm sorry to be a snob like that i really am oh god okay how have they got this to 13 and a half percent Let's put gin in it. Okay, so delve into this Californian. Well, you could possibly swim in it. It's uh, so light. The fruit-driven Merlot from sun-drenched Monterey. Okay, so there's where the alcohol came from. Expect ripe notes of blueberry, raspberry, dark plum, vanilla and chocolate. It's exceptional with roast lamb. Okay, it's nowhere near dark enough to be able to cut roast lamb for me, but then I am a knife and fork wine lover. But let's go first off for <clears throat> blueberry, I'm picking up the blueberry already, raspberry dark plum. I can't imagine I'll have the dark plum because usually that's So the dark plum, vanilla, and chocolate. Well, the vanilla obviously comes from the the oh, the, um, the barrel, um, but chocolate and dark plum usually for me comes from bigger wines. But we'll get in there. So let's go for blueberry. Hmm. Okay. In these situations, I try to imagine that I am, uh, as the late great A. A. Gill would say, he hated going to dinner parties because you're basically captive and usually served terrible food and terrible wine um, in a captive environment, which for a food critic who can, you know, turns down regularly places, uh, I can imagine being particularly bad. But for me, let me make sure that my stupid camera is recording what it should be recording. But for me, <sighs> yeah, I mean, I try to imagine that I am captive in a dinner party and the host has served me this. And do I go, dear God, where's my hip flask? Or do I go, do you know what? I can drink this the rest of the evening. And do you know what? Wow. There's something really not was described there coming. I can't imagine this needs to. Anyway, if you imagine you're at a dinner party and they, you know, you need to drink this the rest of the evening. I could drink this the rest of the evening, especially, you know, if I was in America and I don't want to be rude to anyone in case they, you know, tar me. I'm joking. And uh, so, yes, uh, blueberry, yeah, raspberry. Okay, I'm going to give you that dark plum, 
Yeah, unripe dark plum. Vanilla and chocolate. Yep, there's the vanilla. Uh, chocolate's obviously a, a very large range. This is, you know, kind of white chocolate, probably. Okay. I am going to say this is okay. It's not plump, which is important. I'm going to screw its lovely top back on. So nothing, nothing that we've had today is uh, you know, cook with it, stew. <coughs> but yeah, they're all. I mean, wood. The only I think the next level, okay, of wines is from. Uh, you know, would you be able to drink this all night? Is will you be opening a second bottle if it comes with it? And so far, the opening of the second bottle is, uh, of the first three, yes. Would I order them again and again and again and have it in my list of things to pull out? None of them yet, but let's dig into Malbec. Now, one of the things I do love about certain Argentinian wines, and I cannot profess to have had very many, but, there are some Argentinian restaurants in the UK that I have been to, and quite rightfully only serve Argentinian wine. I was looking for the capsule top from the uh, Monterey Pebble Lane Merlot, and of course there isn't one because it's a screw top. But uh, yeah, they, they in the Gaucho restaurants and other Argentinian restaurants, they only serve Argentinian wine. And what Argentina has, which is wonderful, is uh, very high vineyards. And they make some very nice wines. Very, very nice wines. I mean, who cannot argue with altitude? So let's hope that we have some of that here. We have another composite cork, for which we learn nothing from here, really. But, and can't really smell anything from here. And when you squeeze it, some wine comes out. Ew. Not the same thing. But I get it, corks are expensive. And environmentally, single use is not a great idea. So that's foaming almost. This is, uh, as it's our uh, Argentinian, Marcello, could be Marcello, or could be Marcello, well, Marcello or Marcello. There's a lot of Italian influence in Argentina. Pelleriti. We'll go with Italian. This is Malbec. Aromas of violet and fresh tobacco meat. Rich palate of ripe plum and blackcurrant. Its full body and complex flavours are balanced with a touch of clean acidity. We like that. Partner, oh, here we go. Partner with a hearty steak this winter. As opposed to a steak that has heart. Um, so aromas of, the reason I sighed before is uh, violet and fresh tobacco to me don't go together. You know, violet is very floral and tobacco is very, um, is, is from, you know, so for me, violet is a is a is a is a summery rosé uh, white kind of florally kind of thing, and tobacco is a big red. But anyway, so it meets a rich palette of ripe plum and blackcurrant. Let's get in there. Okay, we're getting the plum and the blackcurrant and the tobacco. We're getting the funky violet as well. I stand corrected. See, I, anyway, so aromas of violet, fresh tobacco, meat, a rich palette of ripe plum and blackcurrant. So yeah, we were getting the violet and the tobacco. Which is weird. Do you know what? Yeah, it passes, it passes the tests. I, so basically the premium 
case of Majestic is £125. You pay £25 more than the £100 you pay for the quarterly. Um, and there's generally uh, 2, 4, 6, 12 plus 1, 13 bottles of wine. So, yeah, I mean, it's good value, I suppose. So that, yeah, I mean, I think this premium case is better value than the normal case. But then wine is like that. Um, by the time you've paid for the cork and the bottle, etc., um, you know, sub ten pound bottle of wine. If you look at the percentage of what actually goes into the wine versus the bottle, the marketing, the labelling, the transport, etc., you're not getting a lot of wine. <coughs> Pay over ten pounds, obviously you get more, and yeah, as you go further. So. We've got another wine to open, but I am pleasantly surprised, interested, and enamoured with our Mendozan Argentinian. That is interesting, very interesting. So, we are off to the Sud de France with the Corbier. I've had good Corbier and I've had terrible Corbier. Let's see which of the Corbiers we have tonight. Okay, we have a proper capsule, which is always a good start. Even though I've hashed it up. You see, I, I just don't have the experience drinking wine anymore. It's my excuse. In the good old days, when I was opening a lot of these. So that's the sound. See, compare these sounds. sound with two very different sounds. It's a bit like, well, I don't know actually, people used to say that drinking beer out of a can was a worse experience than out of a bottle, but to be honest, I don't find that. And I suppose times change and we will get used to um, composite corks and synthetic corks, but they're not. And I am not one of these crusty old traditionalists who goes, oh, I yeah, never had synthetic corks in my time. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This looks amazing. 2017. Wow, 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 wow. I keep trying to read the Borsha seat that's not there. Someone, if someone in Majestic ever watches this, which they won't, they'll go, oh, good lord, yes, we've had it with a Borchassi. So, we are with Le Prior Saint Paul from Corbier. Enjoy a powerful nose of dark fruits. That is definitely coming. And Garrigue herbs. I don't know what Garrigue herbs are. I will look that up. Garrigue, 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 Garrigue. I, uh, my, I can't. My etymology is not uh, giving that anything away. <sighs> yeah. So, some herbs of some variety, along with gentle rose aromas. Oh dear God, I mean, why would you have rose in a big red wine? Thank God it's not there. Um, your floral notes are for f fluffy whites and, and rosés. So enjoy a powerful nose of dark fruits and Garrigue herbs. I am intrigued about Garrigue herbs now. I'm going to, you see, I love Wikipedia. I just want to see what Garrigue is now. Along with gentle rose aromas, with its silky mouth feel and lingering finish. I love the word lingering and, yeah, finish. Well, we, unless we talk about endings, the better. It'll make it a delicious match for slow-cooked red meat stews. It makes a change from some of the uh, sort of wines that you get in a, in a multi-box, which are actually only good to make slow-cooked red meat stews. But let's get back to the powerful nose of dark fruits and green herbs. If 
Greek herbs. It's a bit potpourri, but in the good way, not in the bad way, if that's what Greek herbs are. The dark fruits are definitely there. The gentle rose aromas could be from the Greek herbs. There is something gentle in there. I don't think it's rose, but there is something there. And it's silky mouthings, in, and it definitely has a lingering finish. This is a good wine. This is possibly the best wine of all these. Wow. What a find. Of course, it's got Syrah Grenache and Carignan. This is a proper wine. This is very nice indeed. This, my friends, is a stonker. An absolute stonker. And look at it. I will be ordering more of this. Not just yeah, to work through it. It is amazing. Of all the others, I wanted to have another go at the LB7, as I promised in the previous video, which will be The LB7 has opened up, but it's not as good as this. My God, what a lovely find. 2017 Corvier. Wow. So, I hope you liked this. I have a lot of wine to drink, and I'll see you in the next one.